How many of us, when we have a physical pain, or let me hit it home for some of us ladies, or oh, the indication light come on in your car, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, because you don't know what it means, you just ignore it. And that's what I see happening a lot of times is that after heartbreak, mm -hmm. we ignore the pain, but the pain is not the bad thing. The pain is an indicator. And I have a personal story, medical, to where the pain saved my life. I'm sitting here today because I had a pain. Mm -hmm. And that if I would have ignored the pain, I would have eventually die and die mm -hmm. quickly. Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC. Today on TMC, we will be discussing life after the pain. one of the definitions of aftermath really struck me it says that the period that follows a unpleasant event or accident and the effects that it causes so the unpleasant event that we're going to talk about today is heartbreak i think this is an important topic because i think a lot of times we don't necessarily teach or tell people to process pain, process trauma. I think therapy is getting bigger. People are seeing counselors. That's happening more now than before. But I think that giving yourself that time mm -hmm. after something occurs to evaluate what actually happened, what responsibility do I play in what happened, and allowing yourself to sit in that for a certain period of time so that you can feel all the feelings, but yeah. to be able to decipher them and grow from it. I, I would say, first of all, for anyone who has experienced heartbreak or any type of trauma in your life, I want to first say, I'm sorry. I know the pain is real. I know it really hurts. And what you've been dealing with is real pain. So I want to say that I want to acknowledge the obvious, but what, another thing I do want to say on top of that is there is good news right now because if you're listening to us right now, meaning you're still kicking, meaning you're still living and God still have you. So whatever situation you're in right now, whatever you're going through right now, it doesn't have to stay where it is right now. You have the power, you have the strength to get up and get out of that situation. It's not going to be easy for some of us. We've probably been dealing with things for 10, 20, 30 years. So it takes even longer, but I just want to let you know, right up hand, before we get into this, that you do have what it takes. You can do all things through Christ who give you strength. Uh, it's inside of you. And all you need right now is the tools to get up out of that situation. So I do want to say that first before we, we get started because pain is real. Yes. Thank you for saying that. That yeah. is true. Cause it's an acknowledgement that it doesn't feel good. Yeah. It, it can just downright suck sometimes, but I, I love the encouragement that you, you gave. And I think a lot of times what we have to do is we have to disconnect to the harmful information we got growing up. Absolutely. Especially like if we are talking specifically about relationship pain, Guess what was said? The best way to get over a man is what? Mm -hmm. To get yeah. under. <laughs> yeah. And that is just like. <laughs> I'm like, I never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to get well, I over guess I, I guess it wouldn't nobody tell me that. So. <laughs> well, it's out there. Yeah. You just go get, you know, basically rebound. But it, that's toxic because it's like you never address. And it's ignoring the pain. But think about this. How many of us. When we have a physical pain, or let me hit it home for some of us ladies, or oh, the indication light come on in your car mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, because you don't know what it means, you just ignore it. And that's what I see happening a lot of times is that after heartbreak, mm -hmm. we ignore the pain, but the pain is not the bad thing. The pain is an indicator. And I have a personal story, medical, to where the pain saved my life. I'm sitting here today because I had a pain. Mm -hmm. And that if I would have ignored the pain, I would eventually die and die mm -hmm. quickly. And so a lot of times it's human nature to say, I'm just going to ignore the pain, mm -hmm. but we're causing death yeah. and it may not be a immediate death, but when you ignore pain, you're causing a death in your life. Mm -hmm. And whether there's a death to a new relationship, because you want that pain that's silently pain screaming person. at you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or if it's a pain that I won't go after the career that I really want because mm -hmm. I'm afraid to fail because I did it last time I fell. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important we're examining the aftermath of heartbreak that we have to talk. We have to start this conversation about pain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the pain, the pain comes from 
whatever you've experienced. You just gave us a load of things, whether it's relational, whether it's career-wise, whatever it is, the situation or the trauma that you find yourself in after that situation has occurred. So this is the pain, the feeling, the emotions, the disappointment, the letdown, whatever it is, the after. And here on TMC, we talk about relationships a lot. And relationships are more than just romantic, but the letdown of anything or the desire of what was expected that did not happen or the desire of what was and what no longer is, all of that creates pain. And Sitting in it allows you to process it because most of the time we can't keep just go and keep mm. moving, but now it's being covered up. It's being covered up with my business. It's being mm. covered up with my shopping addiction. It's being covered up with my drinking addiction. Mm. being covered up with my next relationship yeah. Yeah. and now relationship after relationship. So there's a facet of things that's being covered up with. Uh, even thinking is being covered up that I, I remove myself from all of this. So I don't even have to think about the pain that came with this. But then you said something that is so true. It keep it's gonna pop back up somewhere because it was never really addressed. You didn't see it. And sometimes when it pops up, we don't even know what it is. So when it pops up as bitterness, when it pops up as anger from you to other people, when it pops up as sarcasm resentment. or anything of that nature, yes, resentment, all of that, you don't know what it is. It's like now that's where I think we get this idea of something that Cedric already say. People say that's just how I am. I just give it to you real that's just i'm just gonna tell you the truth no that ugliness that bitterness that resentment that anger all of that comes from pain that has happened that's not been dealt with yeah and it's not who you are it's who you become yes yeah so you become uh we all are some total of the things we've been through and yeah so I, I definitely think we definitely need to be aware of it uh we need to acknowledge it acknowledge that it happened because that do happen a lot of times with pain in our past, I, I, I've experienced this personally um, as a teenager, having anger because of issues I had with my father growing up. And then by the time I became 17, 18 years old, I had this anger on the inside of me. And I was, that's why I always say that. That's where that comes from. It comes from me because I was the first one to say, this is just who I am. This is, and then I had to, I had the audacity to say, this is the way God made mm -hmm. me as if God made an angry individual. I mean, but this is what I said. And I really believe this from my heart um, early on. And I was 26 years old when I really had a come to Jesus moment and really began to shift my heart when I really dealt with that issue, the real issue, because the real issue was covered by all sorts of stuff. For me, it was busy. It was working. It was making money. It was getting the new thing, getting the next raise. And that's what I was chasing. So I was chasing, I guess a lot of time you don't see it like that, but I was chasing success. And as soon as I got to this point, I'm, I, I'm chasing another point, but I was never fulfilled. I was never fulfilled. And I looked at myself and I kind of felt good about the fact that I was driven, mm. but I was driven by anger. Mm. I was driven because I was furious and deep down inside, I wasn't happy. And there was nothing Sean could do to bring that happiness out of me. It's something only me and God could do. But I first had to realize that that was a problem. And then once I recognized that problem, I was able to fix it and get away from that anger. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's so important to point out, and you said that, because a lot of times it's basically we're numbing the pain mm -hmm. because no. we don't want to feel it. We don't want to have to process it, to acknowledge it, and then to do something with it. Absolutely. And so we numb it. But I think the issue is that it's easy to identify when somebody's using a destructive measure mm -hmm. to numb. But like you said, you're yeah. chasing success. That yeah. sounds positive. Like, that sounds oh, that's, good. Yeah. It looked good. Yes. Man, everybody was praising me for it. Yeah, but yeah. you... In your inner knowing, you knew that. I know, at the, I know the truth. Yes. And so when you were talking about that, I'm like, man, because we can use busyness, but I'm helping, I'm serving, I'm doing this, but mm -hmm. it's a cover. It's mm -hmm. a cover. You're numbing yourself. And so it's only when you start to unnumb mm -hmm. and you strip away all of that to where you can get down to the root core of issue. Because what has been evident in my life is that when you don't deal with the pain, you develop patterns of pain. Mm. Mm. Hurt people, hurt people, painful people create pain in others. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or in situations. And so the essence of it's, it's for me and it's about others, about the necessity for me to be able to deal with the painful things in my life. It's two things I want to say based off what, what you said. 
uh, the first thing is you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So if you're full of pain, pain is all you can yeah. give. Mm -hmm. So going back to, you know, for someone, grandmother or someone's parent that has instilled pain in them, they only can give you what they have. Yeah. So I'm saying that to go to my next point is don't take it personal because a lot of times we personalize what happened to us by, you know, our family members and things like that. But just really think about this. They only can give you what they have. If they didn't feel love, how can they give you something that they don't have? So they have to have it because a lot of times we hold on. And I did this. I did this with my father, but I think that was one of the things that released me from this when I realized like, wow, Man, he had a tough life. You know, he 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 had it rough. I mean, he was, you know, he used to drink, but he's trying to drink that pain away. And if I were to continue to hold that person or hold that against him, what happened and all the things that did happen. But when I start looking at it from perspective, like, man, he was hurt too. I came to a point in my life where I wasn't taking it personal because one point I was taking it personal. But when I realized that I wasn't taking it personal, and honestly, I began to feel empathy for him. Mm -hmm. And you can't. You can't have resentment and empathy at the same time for the same individual. At least that's how it worked for me. I mean, once I had resentment, but once I realized his situation and what he was dealing with, it really released me from my resentment and I had empathy for him and I was able to move on with my life. So you had to come to a place and it's a powerful place to where you understood the man behind the fatherhood. Absolutely. That you, Absolutely. you know, you gave him grace. You were able to give grace because you stopped seeing him as my dad. And this is my expectations of you as my dad yeah. versus this is your story as a man. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. At that point, you're now acknowledging that they had pain too. Please don't get us wrong. It's not excusing someone to, like I'm giving you a pass to give me pain, but it's if your kids grow up, by the time you acknowledge that you've had pain and you parented your children somehow out of their pain, you could have caused some pain for them. I remember, I remember we were doing a Bible study with the church and the uh, writer said in this uh, Bible study series, she said, I'm already saving for my kids therapy. And that was because of when the things that she did not know when she first became a parent, the first group of kids, this is going to affect them. Yeah. And she's like, I'm saving for their therapy so they'll be able to get some help with those things I did not know. And that's the thing that I think about a lot of times, especially when it comes to someone causing you pain, the idea in human nature, you like someone should suffer for this hurt mm -hmm. that has caused me. Someone should feel what I'm feeling and all of that. But when you step back and like Cedric said, you start having empathy for the person to understand their story and understand the pain because it's the same thing that we need when we're doing something that someone else doesn't quite understand, which could be our children, our spouse, our siblings. Yeah. I think that's so powerful because going back to the pain point is that acknowledging and it takes a level of examining mm -hmm. because once you are able to acknowledge, okay, I'm in pain. That's one of the most powerful yeah. statements of I'm in pain. Once you're acknowledging that and then you can examine, there's some things, and this is from a romantic standpoint that after the pain, I was able to see signs that I missed. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the most powerful things was that I was able to accept responsibility yeah. for some mm -hmm. of the, my actions. Because a lot of times when we're in pain, it's easy to blame the other Absolute person. Defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but then it's like, okay, what what some things I can own? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, and now was that immediate? No, it mm -hmm. took like a year and a half for me to be able to really just fully own some of the things that I contribute to the demise of the relationship. So. Mm -hmm. And I think about that when you when you were just talking, I thought about the responsibility part, too, because there was a time in my life where if you would have asked me that any pain that you experienced, like, what What you mean? I got some responsibility. They did this to me. They didn't do this for me, whatever mm -hmm. it was. But anything relationship wise, it's like, OK, what part did I play? And even if it was something like you said that I missed or that I saw and I chose to ignore whatever it was, I used to think that there was no, it couldn't be that I bared any responsibility in it. 
responsibility part is in relational. Definitely not in someone being molested or a child being abused uh -huh. because you're a kid. You have no control over what someone did to you. You have no control over what someone that was supposed to protect you did not do or care for you did not do. You have no control over that. Absolutely. But I think when I say responsibility, it definitely for me is relational in things that I allowed. Yeah. And just being grateful, being grateful for the things that you have right before you, because whatever we focus on, you know, that's where your mind goes. That's good in our lives every day, yeah. but really, you know, have, having affirmations, three things, three things that you're grateful for. And every day, you know, what three wins that you had of the day and, and, and kind of going off that and really restructuring your mind into not focusing on what went wrong mm -hmm but what is going right. And, and, and what that does, that give us the gasoline to be able to pull ourselves out of that hole, because there's someone right now that may not have a community that they can lean on to mm -hmm. pull them out of the hole. Listen to me, you're strong enough. You're strong enough to pull yourself out out all you have to do is pull on that power that jesus has given you and you can pull yourself right out of that situation recalibrate from the pain because you have the pain and the pain is what causes the emotion it causes the feelings it causes these things to go but you have to recalibrate to the facts to the facts of what's going on because feelings are not facts and we have to sometimes step away from the feelings. Listen, what I'm saying is not easy. That's why I'm keep repeating it. It's not easy, but we have to step away from the feelings and we have to rely on the facts because facts is what you can really see. Is the sun out or is it raining outside? Is it snowing outside? Those are the facts. I mean, but sometimes it can be sunny outside and it feels cloudy. It's a feeling because it feels like it, but the sun is beaming on your face, but you're feeling something else. So I want us to just step back real quick and recalibrate to the facts of where we actually are right now. Yeah. And the facts of today do not have to be the facts of tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And that's the real truth of I like it. That. And I like you, that. when you were talking about in this reframing and what are we going to focus on? That was one of the most powerful things. One of my mentors told me was to reframe how yeah. we're seeing things. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness, he must know. Uh, I know you don't know, but I yeah, bought I a gratitude. A refresh, <laughs> but I bought a gratitude journal uh, from the store that's formerly called, I'm not going to say their name, but it's a $1.25 tree <laughs> now. But I bought, and just it, but the prompts in that, and it gave you prompts for each day. And it was different things like the things that you were describing. And it shifted because as you're going through the day, it's like now I'm like thinking about, OK, I'm going to do my journaling tonight and I'm going to have to do three things. So it's like I'm actively searching for attention. things throughout my day that I can be grateful for that or whatever the prompt may be. And it's powerful because then it, it like you say, it shifts your perspective into something positive, mm -hmm. something positive. And so. I think that's that's so. Do you have some practical questions that was taken out of that that helped you that you can share with the TMC? Not necessarily questions, but some things that I I probably pose to myself is what are the things I'm overlooking in my day, uh -huh. and I think the things that if something if I had a negative experience in that day, I have to say, and what else happened today? The other thing is being mindful to take the time to be aware of what's happening through my day. It's like not being, not existing. And this is something I've been intentional about for the last probably five or six years is to be present in my day. Yeah. And I think that helps brings an awareness of the positive things that are going on in my day. Okay. And this is the key though. I can write in my journal some days and it took me a place to get here. I'm grateful for the pain mm. because the pain indicates number one, that I'm still able to feel. Mm. Mm. And that when that pain hit, and this happened recently, I was able to get to the root of the root of the root of the yeah. problem. And even though it hurt, it hurts some type of terrible, but I can move forward now. Yeah. I can now address the root of the root issue. Yeah. And it gave me a level of hope. And I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. It, it took all a million and one things for it all to come together for mm -hmm. me to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful for the journey of getting to that point. And it didn't happen overnight. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually that's interesting because we talked about uh, one side of pain, but you have another aspect of pain that is good. 
you know, for example, you go to the gym, work out, you're stretching mm -hmm. your muscles, but it's intentional because you're expecting something, you're expecting growth. You, you're like, I'm going to intentionally beat up my body. I'm going to intentionally do this so I can gain strength, so I can gain muscles. Because one thing and I love about the body, and it's the same thing with us as men and women of God, it's like when things happen, when the devil put that weight on you, Boy, if you just keep on going to the gym, you're going to have the strength to be able one day, you may not be able to push them off today, but you'll be able to push them off tomorrow. It's like one of them things that thing that, 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 that makes us stronger. It makes us wiser and it makes us better because I look back and just like you, Jamila, I promise you, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for everything that happened to me because everything that happened to me, it happened for me. And it happened for a time like this, because if it wasn't for some of the things I've been through, some of the things I'm doing today, some of the, the passions I have today, and some of the things, you know, the purpose driven things that I'm doing on regular everyday basis, I wouldn't even have the desire to do it. But a lot of desires is because of the reminder, not of the pain, but of the scars. Mm -hmm. Because every time I look in the mirror, I see the scars. I see the scars. I see what it was and I see what it is. And my thing is like, man, you know what? I can help two types of people. I can tell, I can help someone else that have scars. And I can also go down to the elementary schools and help these kids prevent getting scars. So it, it's, it's a twofold thing for me based on where I've been. But if I have never been through that, I wouldn't even have the desire to even do what I'm doing. That's powerful. Wow, wow, wow. That's powerful. I think one of the things that's projected on us, and I remember going through, I can tell you three different things. One was after Hurricane Harvey. Uh, one was uh, after something else was going on. I think I lost uh, someone that was really close to me. And people kept projecting on me, be strong, be strong. And at the moment, nothing in me felt strong. Mm. And when I was at that place of, I'm just weak. I don't want to be strong. I just want to be. And it's like, I don't, I cannot cry. It's like, don't cry. It's like, but why not? I'm hurting. Uh -huh. And so it was like, and I, I know what you're saying, that place of strongness, but sometimes as women, when we hear that, it, we're cringe because sometimes there's a burden to be strong, uh -huh. but in that place of weakness, we do gain strength. And I love how you framed it in God, but I had to get to that. It's like, and I, I remember back in the day on a social media post, I was like, you know, stop projecting on people to be strong because even strong people have to cry. Absolutely. I mean, you just said something and I, I think it's our perspective because strength don't mean you don't, don't cry. And I think that's where the false that's perception right. is because hurt. here it is. Yeah. Jesus, the shortest scripture in the Bible said Jesus, Jesus wept. wept. And he, was Jesus weak? No. And he wept. And he still has strength. Still was the, yeah. Well, you guys were talking. You started off, Cedric, then Jamila. And the thing that I wrote down when you were talking was reframing. Because I think that even when you say just said about the strength, I think with so many things, we have to reframe it. Mm. And understand that if you think about reframing, and I've talked about this before, you take in the same picture and you're taking it out that little cheap black frame from Family Dollar. And you put in a nice frame that you got from JC Penney's or Walmart, and it changes the look of that picture. So I think that that is what our pain is designed to do for us, because I believe we have all everything we experience. God wastes nothing. He wastes nothing. nothing. And it all has a purpose. Uh -huh. The thing that we acknowledge is that it doesn't feel good. Uh -huh. We acknowledge that it hurts. We acknowledge that you're gonna, you will find yourself shedding some tears. You and it's okay. It, it, and it's that, okay. Absolutely. All of the things feel it. That's why I started off with sit in it because you have to, when I say sit in it, I mean allow yourself to feel what you feel and then you process and move forward step by step by step. And that doesn't, it's not like, okay, today you feel it, tomorrow you did it. No, everything is a process. And to me, everything you do is constantly reframing it. You're now building this beautiful frame that makes the picture look different. And the picture is you. It produces, like you said, Cedric, your past produced this purpose that you help other people yeah. that you now want to prevent mm -hmm. others from having pain. 
it's been reframed. Yeah. It's the same pain, but it's been reframed. And now that picture looks completely different. Even for like you, that, yeah. the same thing, same pain you experienced, but now you're on here to tell other people, your strength doesn't mean that you don't hurt. Your strength doesn't mean that you don't need somebody to check on you. Yeah. It's the same pain, but it's now being reframed. And even here on TMC, they get to see the beautiful picture of the purpose that it now produces in your life. Uh -huh. And the truth that we always acknowledge, it don't feel good when you're going through it. The hurt, the pain, it does. The aftermath is what we're talking mm -hmm. about. So there's a process to even get to the building the frame. And now you see the beautiful picture, which is the purpose. When you were talking about journaling and I was thinking about questions that you would see in the journal, you know, three things that you enjoyed about today or something that made you smile today. Sometimes there are days when you may find that hard, like, what is it? What is it? What is it? But doing it on the regular for journaling makes you start to look forward for it and having Someone in your corner that you know is going to ask you about it. Mm -hmm. Someone in your corner that's going to check on you and things of that nature. That's what gives you what you need to keep going, to move forward for it. So you can get to the point where it's reframed and now it's now it's serving its purpose, which is to help others, which is to be a blessing to others. And I think that it's important to know that there is nothing wrong with getting help in any way shape or form and the thing that i believe all of us would want for someone to take from this podcast today is that you're not alone that's alone you first of all and foremost you have god he is concerned he cares and he's with you second of all you have a community and if you don't have a community there is a community available reach out find someone get some professional help lean on whatever you need to lean on to get through the situation that you are now finding yourself in the aftermath of and then start looking for it to me what we said here today start looking for the silver lining the silver lining is you beginning to build that frame to reframe the pain so that it produces a purpose and understanding the different facets of it, what it takes to get there so we definitely hope you enjoyed this candid conversation with us today and we pray that someone was helped we just encourage you to keep listening over and over and over again and continue to reframe your pain for purpose. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notification bell, and just remember that sharing is caring. So share with someone you love, uh, share it with a friend, share it on social media and all your social media platforms. So yeah, we want to do that. Also, if you on iTunes, go ahead and rate this podcast and leave a review. That helps get the word out. So thank you for joining this conversation. We look forward to seeing you next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from surviving, surviving to thriving. Bye. See you, see you next, next week. week.